Welcome back to you, 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 I guess. And you. Not you. Not him? You. Oh, her, for sure. Them. Yes. And welcome back to you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. The one watching this video right now. Welcome back to episode 24 of the Louisville Badgers. And today, as you guys can see, we just got done beating the Phoenix Suns in last episode. It was a five-point really cool game, actually. Uh, if you didn't see it, go back and check it out. It ended up, uh, you know, coming down to the wire. But in today's episode, we got a few things that we're going to do, okay? So, number one, we're going to start exploring the trade possibilities that I talked about in the community section recently. But as I was going through the schedule... I was trying to pick out the coolest game that we could play, and even though the Vancouver Grizzlies are uh, not a great team, and it's probably going to be kind of an easy game, we're going to play them. We're going to play them here on January 19th, 2021. Okay, so we are going to pass through January 1st and get into the new year, and we are going to play the newly relocated, albeit struggling, Vancouver Grizzlies, whose record is almost the exact inverse of ours, give or take a game or two. And then we're also going to take a look at some stats and records and some cool stuff like that. But first, we are going to jump in to what I talked about a second ago. And that is the trade with the Miami Heat. Out of all the trades that I've been offered as we've been going through this season, the one that was the most intriguing to me so far was a few weeks ago in our schedule. The Miami Heat offered me a trade for Jackson Hayes. And at the time, it involved like Monty Morris and, you know, a couple of other things or whatever. I didn't really want to give them Monty Morris. And as I let you guys vote on it, you guys didn't want me to give them Monty Morris either. So, the trade that I came up with was a reiteration of a trade that they offered. And you'll see the deal up on your screen right now. But I think the original deal was like uh, Zubots, Monty Morris, and the 2022 first round unprotected. Uh, from us going over to them for Jackson Hayes and Josh Richardson. Well, I reworked that deal to make it Zubots and Joe Harris and a 2022 first round unprotected. And I threw in a 2025 second round unprotected just to get the deal done to bring over those same two guys, Jackson Hayes and Josh, Josh Richardson. So this is going to be a good move for us. And I'll tell you exactly why. Number one, Jackson Hayes is a guy who I want to start playing immediately, okay? Not only because Sabonis is injured at the moment and we're going to need him anyway, but also because of the fact that I think that he's going to develop into a stud, and that's just my opinion. We'll have to see what happens with him, but that's my opinion. And then Josh Richardson, who just further solidifies us as a defensive team. We've got a lot of shooters and scorers on this team, a lot of guys who can put the ball in the bucket, but I think it would be very, very smart of us to go out and get us another defensive guy. Now, Josh Richardson can also put the ball in the hole. Don't, don't you know, make, make, make no mistake about it. But he's a defensive guy as well. I think he's got like a B or a B plus rated for perimeter defense. So that's going to be huge for us. So this is going to be the trade that we are going to do. So here you have it. Do you want to make this trade? Yes, we do. And the Heat obviously agreed to our trade offer because this was based off of a deal that they made up anyway. And so now with that deal in place, let's go over to our coaching game plan. I'm going to change a few things up, and then I'm going to show you guys what I've done. So with the new guys in the rotation, and with Sabonis being out for at least the next one or two weeks with injury, this is the way we're going to line up for now. So obviously, John Morant is going to be at the one, Anthony Edwards at the two, our newly acquired Josh Richardson will start for us at the three for now, Jaron Jackson Jr. at the four as always, and then I am going to start Jackson Hayes at the five, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I really, really am satisfied with uh, DeAndre Jordan coming off the bench. Then you got Monty Morris as our sixth man. DeAndre Jordan with 24 minutes is going to get almost as many minutes as Jackson Hayes anyway. Then you got Keldon Johnson getting about 17 minutes a game. I do want to make sure that he's still getting worked in, despite the fact that Anthony Edwards is back. And then here's another new face in the rotation, in our 10-man rotation. Khalil Whitney will be the ninth man. He's going to get, get about 14 minutes a game. I did say I want to kind of alternate between him and Baisley. I do want to give Whitney a chance at least to see what he can do. He's been a little bit unhappy lately, so let's make him happier, get him some playing time. And then rounding out the 10-man the rotation will be Myers Leonard getting about 10 minutes a game. Again, we do have guys like Avery Bradley who I do want to work in as well. So that that you know that 10th man could change at some point in the very near future. And then, of course, when Sabonis comes back from, uh, from his injury, uh, Myers Leonard is probably going to get worked out of this rotation. So, you know, maybe we look to trade a guy like Myers Leonard or Avery Bradley before the trade deadline. Who knows? But at least for now, we've got these guys for depth. 
So now that you've seen the lineup, now that you see the, the new pieces plugged into where they're going to be, we are going to simulate up to this January 19th game against the Vancouver Grizzlies. And this will be our game that we'll play for the month of January. So let's simulate up to that. And right off the bat, we've received an offer. Uh, Joe Ingles and a second round pick for DeAndre Jordan. No, thank you. Uh, another trade offer here, uh, Gasol and Delgado for DeAndre Jordan and a 23 first round pick. Did we put him on the trade block or something like that? I don't know. But anyway, I don't want this trade either. So now that the simulating is over, that brings us to our January 19th meeting against the Vancouver Grizzlies. As you can see, for the most part, we've continued our winning ways. They've continued their losing ways. The first game up was against Romeo Langford and the Hawks. Romeo Langford scored 25. We ended up beating them by 9 in this game. Langford with 25, Monk with 15, and on our end, John Morant with 24 and 7, and then J uh, Jaron Jackson with 19 and 8. Next up, we took a loss to the Raptors, a 5-point loss, close game. Jaron Jackson with 31, 11, and 2. Morant with 18, 5, and 8. Myers Leonard actually put up 12 points in only 11 minutes, so not bad. Next up, a big 17-point win over the Warriors. John Morant with 39, 6-6, 2-1. What a great game. Anthony Edwards coming back strong. Steph Curry putting up 25, 7-6. Motley with 21 and 13. Wow. Klay Thompson with 20. And then their rookie, Precious Achua, with 19 and 4. But it would not be enough to take us down on this day. Next up, we played Vernon Carey and the Wizards and beat them by 30. Vernon Carey was the only real standout here. He had 19 and 7. And then on our end, Jaron Jackson and John Morant, the dynamic duo once again. Morant with a beautiful double-double, 25 and 13. Jaron Jackson with 32 and 8. Uh, so just a very good game. Next up, a win against arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference, the 76ers. We beat them by 14. Morant with 24, 3 and 5. Anthony Edwards coming up big in this game with 26 and 3 with a steal and a block. Keldon Johnson did his thing too with 15, 3 and 4. And then on their end, Embiid with 23, 11 and 1. Boyan Bogdanovic with 18 and 2. And then Ben Simmons with 16, 9 and 3. So next up, we took a loss to the Bucks. Kind of a big loss, I guess. 17 point loss. Jaron Jackson was the only real standout here with 24, uh, I'm sorry, 23, 4 and 2. But it was Giannis's 35 point near triple double that took us down in this one. 35, 11 and 8 for him. Next up, it was the Magic beating us by 30. My goodness. Trey Young and Nikola Vucevic uh, really putting it on us here. Uh, Vucevic with 27 and 13. Trey Young, man, he's just having himself a hell of a season again. Jaron Jackson with 29 and 2, two steals and three blocks in this one. Morant with 19, 2 and 7 and three steals. So not a terrible game, but we just lost big. Next up, a close game against the Lakers, who we usually struggle against. We beat them by three. Jaron Jackson with 22, 6 and no assists, but a steal and five blocks. Jackson Hayes coming up huge with 20 points. Seven rebounds, four assists. This guy is going to be really, really awesome for us. So glad we have him on the team. And then for the Lakers, it was uh, LeBron James, Cousins, Kuzma. Y you guys, you guys know the story with that. You already know. Next up, the Orlando Magic again. And we returned the favor and beat them by 37 points after losing to them by 30. No fault of Trey Young, though, who scored 29. But on our end, it was... Ja Morant once again 27 4 and 7 with two steals DeAndre Jordan coming up big with 18 and 14 look at this game though almost everyone in our rotation scored in double digits and Myers Leonard wasn't that far off had himself a good game seven points and eight rebounds but just an all-around amazing effort from the entire team and then our final game before we play the Vancouver Grizzlies was against the Detroit Pistons who we seem to have their number pretty well this year beat them for I think the fourth time Mike Conley with 22, Rodney Hood with 21. Griffin and Drummond didn't really show up in points, but Drummond with 26 rebounds. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And then Jaron Jackson with a nice double-double, 29, 13, and 3. Anthony Edwards with a good game, 19, 6, and 6. John Morant still right there, 15, 1, and 4. I would have liked them to do a little bit more in the assists and rebounds, but nonetheless, we still got the win by 8 points. But that now brings us to our January 19th matchup against the Vancouver Grizzlies. Before we hop into this one, which we're going to do in just a minute here, I do want to take a look at something really quick that I thought was really cool to show you guys. So take a look at the all-star voting. I do believe that Jaron Jackson should be here. However, take a quick peek at this. Your boy Ja Morant for the backcourt voting. 1,390,000 votes. He is right there with guys like D'Angelo Russell and Kyrie Irving. He is looking poised to make his first appearance in an all-star game in only his second year in the NBA. That is extremely exciting. Now, I will say that I believe 
that Jaron Jackson deserves to be here as well in some fashion. But for now, I'll take John Morant being there all day. And then one other thing that I wanted to take a really quick look at was the award races uh, for the season. Where are they? Here they are. Okay, so Jokic is in first place for MVP right now. No surprises there, man. This guy is 22, 15, and 7. That is just a monster season. You see Giannis, Westbrook, Curry, and Harden up there as well. You see Jaden McDaniels is in the lead for Rookie of the Year at the moment. James Wiseman is right up there with him as well. Then you got Jalen Lecue, Garrett Cerner. That's a big one there. And then Anthony Edwards is in fifth. Larry Nance Jr. is in the lead right now for sixth man of the year. Defensive player of the year, as it stands, Giannis would win it if the season ended today. But Kawhi Leonard is right there on his heels. And then look at this, most improved. The Knicks have three guys. Michael Porter Jr., Zion Williamson, and Dennis Smith Jr. You see Jordan Clarkson and uh, Romeo Langford are sprinkled in there as well. But three guys for the New York Knicks, that's pretty big. So they're having themselves a monster, monster season. And then that brings us back to the MVP, which obviously, as I showed you guys earlier, Jokic is leading that. However, now that we got those couple of things out of the way that I wanted to show you guys, it is now time to take on the 12-33 and 33 Vancouver Grizzlies. Uh, again, newly relocated Vancouver Grizzlies. This team right now is very thin, okay? Uh, they did have the same roster from when they were in Memphis, but of course, they don't have Jaron Jackson because we have him. They don't have John Morant because we have him. <laughs> so uh, as you guys know, however, they do have the number one overall pick from this past draft class in Isaiah Stewart. And uh, they've got actually Ty Jerome starting at point guard, I believe. Does that mean someone's injured? Yes. Okay, so just as I expected, I did think that they had somebody better at point guard. And it looks like Ricky Rubio, dislocated right elbow, will not play in this one. He's out one to two weeks. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but for them, they're already very thin. This is probably a pretty big loss for them. But anyway, this is how their lineup will look for this matchup without Ricky Rubio. They'll have Ty Jerome starting at point guard. Javon Carter starting at shooting guard, Kyle Anderson starting at the three, Isaiah Stewart at power forward, and then Jonas Valanciunas starting at center. And then, of course, you guys know what our lineup looks like. However, it is quite a bit different than it was from last episode because we have Anthony Edwards back at the two now. We have our newly acquired Josh Richardson at the three, Jaron Jackson, of course, at the four. But Jackson Hayes is going to start at the five with Sabonis being out and with DeAndre Jordan coming off the bench. And then, of course, as you guys know, our blossoming superstar, John Morant, will be our floor general as usual. But anyway, let's hop right into this home game against the new look Vancouver Grizzlies. Hi, everyone. We're coming to you live on 2K Sports, bringing you the NBA. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and two Hall of Famers, Doris Burke here at the table and on the sideline, David Aldridge. So it sounds like Kevin Harlan doesn't have anything more to say. So I guess I'll take over. So here we are at tip-off against the Vancouver Grizzlies. Again, as I said earlier, we are at home. Uh, so, you know, we do have the home crowd uh, behind us. Uh, here we go, John Morant. You know, I always have so many, tr so much trouble scoring on the first drive, on the first possession. I really do. Like, I don't know what it is about that, but uh, I always have issues with that. And let's see if we can stick with Ty Jerome here. He's not known for his athleticism. He's kind of slow, but we foul him. Okay. He was kind of getting through there, getting through the defense a little bit. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe that was a good foul. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, he's not necessarily known for his athleticism or speed. So, uh, shouldn't be that tough. Oh, Jaron Jackson. Come on. you got to get that, buddy. You've got to get that. And no way, Jose, for Valanchunas. Let's push this. Jaron Jackson wide open. And doesn't get it. Isaiah Stewart closed out pretty well on that one. But we do have a couple free throws coming up so we should be able to get on the board here early all right so jaron jackson made one of his two free throws so we're up one nothing we got a baseball score going here all right let's see uh whoa okay maybe ty jerome's a little faster than advertised let's see if uh we can stick with valentunas in this one. are you kidding me oh my god all right, we got Kyle Anderson pushing in transition a little bit here. Ty Jerome. Uh, why did he not take that layup? Okay, Anderson, no. Okay, nice. Oh, my God. What a rebound. And Richardson, bang. 
Three-pointer, let's go. Newly acquired, loving to see that. All right, 12-6, to six, they've got a lead on us here. This is not what I wanted to happen, and there we go. We close the gap with Ant-Man with coming up with a big three-pointer there. So glad to have him back, man. I, I, I do want to ease him in, and look at that. Almost with the steal there. Great hands. But I'm, I'm just so glad to have him back and get him back to developing again. And Ty Jerome, please no. Okay, he missed it. Nice. All right, so we got a chance to either tie or make this closer. Jackson Hayes, bang. Mid-range. 14-11. Oh, another tip. And Valanchunas, of course. Okay. So we're getting the tips on him, man. We're, we're playing decent defense, but Valanchunas with 12 of their 16 points so far. We have got to uh, we got to find a way to stop that guy. Morant, that's all day, baby. All day. You already know what time it is. You already know what time it is. I got to come out. I got to come up with something for that. Uh, something that, that has to do with John Morant for what time it is. I don't know what time it is, but you know he's making those all day long. Kyle Anderson, he's another. They got a couple slow guys on their team, man. Not not slow mentally. I mean, like, just athletically. All right. And the slowest man in the NBA just uh, hit us with a teardrop. So, nice floater there by him. And it is an 18-14 to 14 lead for Vancouver. I feel like we should be up already early here, just putting the pressure on him. But uh, we got Javon Carter on Jackson Hayes, and that is a favorable matchup all day go to work young man Jackson Hayes all right this is Markeith Morris inbounding the ball here you see Zach Little is in the game now along with Tony Parker old man Tony Parker he's, he's got to be like 47 years old doesn't he he's trying whoa he's trying to put the moves on some bonus and no dice don't even try it don't even try it you're like 68 See, and that's what we do on the other end to you. Sabonis is a young man. Don't try it, Tony Parker. All right, push it and transition here. DJ back to Whitney. And he missed it. Oh, my God. Whoa. Okay. Keldon Johnson, where did you come from, buddy? Nice put back dunk. All right, so they are still up by six points, man. So they're doing a good job of, uh, of sticking right here with us, despite the fact that I feel like we're, we're actually not playing a bad game right now. And... No! Oh, DeAndre Jordan! Another... Bet. That's another put-back dunk, man. That, that one might have been better than Keldon Johnson's, though. Man, that was thunderous. And uh, we go into the second quarter down by four. Pushing it in transition here. We are down by six here early in the second quarter. Let's see what Sabonis and Monty Morris can do here. We're over in the corner, kind of trapped. Keldon Johnson was screaming for the ball. Thank God he made that one. Big three-pointer there. We're down by three. All right, one-point game. Ja is back in the game. Look at that. Oh, my God. That boy is agile and athletic, and I am really really gonna like having him on his team he is three for three so far in this game and i am very satisfied with what i'm seeing so far and not set oh i was getting ready to say not satisfied with that but john moran came up with the block and on the other end we get blocked as well okay all right so good play followed up by such not such a good play all right inbounding the ball here let's see if we can not get blocked again john Morant. And one, baby. Oh, he is just, this young man is just literally blossoming right in front of our eyes into a stud. I know I probably say that all the time, but man, he, he is impressing me more and more every game. All right, we're up by two here. Midway through the second quarter, and oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to overreact. I'm not going to overreact. I'll, I'll let you guys react to that one, okay? I'll let you guys react to it. Points. 
John Morant is uh, quite possibly one of the most impressive players that I've played with and developed here. And that man is not far behind him. Jaron Jackson with the big three-pointer to put us up by five points here late in the second quarter. Let's see what Ty Jerome has in store for us here. Passing the ball around. Valanchunas, that's the guy we got to make sure doesn't hurt us. He's been hurting us so far. He's got a lot of points. Isaiah Stewart, the first overall pick, the rookie. He's probably going to have a hard time today against Jaron Jackson. As a matter of fact, I might end up having to put Jaron Jackson on Valanchunas at some point. And look at that. Shot clock violation. Let's go. Still up by five. Ant-Man, what do you got, Ant-Man? Get it to Jackson Hayes and let him do work, baby. Let him do some work. Man, that, that, that boy is so athletic. I am loving this tandem. John Morant and Anthony Edwards throwing it into Jackson Hayes is going to be so fun. And we're up by seven, and the Grizzlies are going to take a timeout and talk it over and see if uh, they can come back from that huge dunk. So we're up by three. They closed the gap a little bit here. They're, they're, they had a little bit of a good, decent run defensively and offensively. Sabonis, no dice. Oh, DeAndre Jordan, another putback. I am getting pretty good at that, man. I am getting really good at making sure I hold that button down. All right, time winding down here. We're up by five points. I would like to go into the half up by either that or more and we got whoa what just happened there I think that like rolled around his shoulders oh look at the block by DeAndre he's doing everything and he is hype he is real hype They're going to inbound it here. 5.6 still on the clock. Let's see if we can play some good D. Good defense here, and that should be no go. Oh, it almost went in, but at the half, we are still going to maintain the five-point lead. So not too bad, considering we were down by four going into the second. So we won that quarter by nine, if my math is correct. And as you can see, the halftime report here, we're up by five points, shooting 51% to their 48%, so not bad on either side. 23 rebounds to their 19. That is always going to be the stat that I look for. John Morant with 12, 4, and 6 so far. Picking up here in the third, early on in the third quarter. See if we can have a good second half, and it's already starting out really good with an Anthony Edwards steal, John Morant. And that is a nice move, but we got the foul, but uh, not the end one. Not mad about that, though. Over a minute and a half into the third quarter of action. All right, three-point game here. I, we need to stop Valanchunas. That, that is like the biggest. He's the only one that's really been okay. Okay, Isaiah Stewart. Okay. I get it. I get it. I get that you're here. I get that you were the first overall pick. But uh, you know what? We got some really good picks on our team too, including this man right here. Bang! That's a nice pick too, baby. It's a one-point game, man. They are really keeping it close here. Love this little inbound here with Ja and Jared and Jackson Hayes. I'm sorry. I was going to say Jaron Jackson. Jackson Hayes to Ja Morant. The dunk and the and one, man. I am loving it. I am just loving it. He is... What more can you say about him? Six-point lead for us here. Keldon Johnson is out here cutting. And in transition, man, we are a dangerous team. They got old man Tony Parker back on the floor again. And that is Markeith Morris. And that is a problem. That is a big problem. We got to stop that. All right. And again, Markeith Morris again. Please, somebody cover him. Are we just leaving him alone on purpose? Like, what is that? What is that? Yeah, don't leave this man alone. Don't leave this man alone, and do not leave Tony Parker on him because it is just not going to work out for you. You see, jo Jonas Valanciunas has like 20 points, though. That's a uh, that's a problem for me. I'm not even in look at this beautiful steal, beautiful steal. Oh, 
Oh my god, that was actually uh, not an emphatic throwdown, but it was a nice little 360. All right, boys. Seven point game. See if we can close this uh, close this thing out here. Going into the fourth quarter, time winding down in the third here. Monty Morris and John Morant in the game, and a beautiful little mid ranger there for John Morant at the shooting guard position as it stands right now. So I actually I actually kind of like this little this little look here with uh, Monty Morris playing the one and uh, John Morant playing the two. Oh, that should have been a steal. And, of course, Wendell Carter is going to hit that to make it a seven-point game. Let's see if we can heave one up from half court here and not even close. All right, so going into the third quarter, I'm sorry, going into the fourth quarter, we are up by seven, and it's actually looking pretty good. Uh, it just everything about this game feels right right now. I mean, we don't. I don't feel like they're doing anything to close the gap. They're not doing anything exciting. Let's close them out in the fourth. All right, we got a little bit of a fast break here. DeAndre Jordan, he's not going to he is not going to complete a fast break. I'll tell you that right now. But he will do that. He will do that all day long, baby. Nice little flush from DeAndre. 11 point game now. So we're doing exactly what I said I wanted to do, which was put the pressure on him here late in the game. Just make sure that they don't uh, close that gap. Jackson Hayes, he is too long for you, Isaiah Stewart. Too long for you, but look at that. That is just too much, and no go. No dice. Mo Wagner, and look at that. Look how quick that little layup there was from Khalil Whitney. He is, I like him. Still a 10-point game. Let's see if we can keep double digits here. Kyle Anderson, no way. No way. It's the side of the backboard. Jackson Hayes, he can run a fast break, I'll tell you that right now. And Keldon Johnson once again cutting, man. When he cuts, it's just like, I mean, it's like it makes my eyes light up. I, I just love when he cuts to the basket like that because he is he's lethal. Let's play some defense here. And a nice little, look at the poke. We didn't get it, but still, man, just a good effort. Very good effort defensively there. Six to shoot. Once Jaron Jackson comes back in the game, we will have him on Valanchunas, so that shouldn't be too big of an issue. But Khalil Whitney plays beautiful defense on him there. Monty Morris, what do you got? Oh my God, Ty Jerome, that should have been a that should have been a flagrant. What are you mad about? Shouldn't be mad about anything. All right, so they close the gap a little bit here. We're up by seven. Jaron Jackson, what do you got, Jaron? Ja that is just too easy. That is just too easy. Valanchunas, man, you're, you're not going to stop that. I, I don't feel like you should ever be stopping that in any way. Okay, Zach Little bringing the ball up here. We got a nine-point lead, and we're feeling pretty comfortable here. Going on two minutes to play in the fourth, and Valanchunas is going to keep trying that. And that was the most relaxed rebound I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, Monty Morris, what do you got for me? Get it to, that was supposed to go to Jackson Hayes, but... It works out because guess who got it? Your boy Jaron Jackson. All day long, baby. 49 seconds left to go. We got a 13-point lead. And I feel, feel pretty good about this one. I feel like this one is just about over. Wendell Carter, when he's missing stuff like that, that's usually an uh, indication that it's time to go night-night. Time to go night-night. Jaron Jackson Jr. just padding the stats a little bit with the little green release layup. And Zach Little's going to bring it up here. And we're not going to stop putting the pressure on defensively. I'm going to tell you that right now. We are not going to stop, but Wendell Carter, he uh, he's not going to stop putting the pressure on offensively either, I guess. So as you guys can see, Avery Bradley's in the game. He's wearing the double zeros now because uh, Josh Richardson stole his, uh, his number, number zero. But uh, we're going to dribble this one out a little bit. Still going to be some time left on the clock for them, but I doubt they're going to do anything. I guess we'll take one more shot here with John Morant. And for good measure, he nails it from three. 
So a nice, beautiful double-double for him. 32, 5, and 11, as you see up in the top right corner. And they're going to just dribble this one the rest of the way out. And that is the end of regulation in what was a fairly easy game after that first quarter where they were up by, I think, four points. From that point on, we took over and just dominated this game for three more quarters. And we walk out of here with a 115-99 to victory over the newly relocated Vancouver Grizzlies. Our two new additions, Jackson Hayes and Josh Richardson, were awesome. Uh, Josh Richardson was kind of quiet, at least in the box score, but he did things defensively that were awesome. Jackson Hayes had just a great game. I think he had like 12 points, 6 rebounds, and like 3 assists or something like that. I have to double check it. But if I'm not mistaken, he didn't miss a single shot from the field. So just a great effort and a great victory for us. So here is one more look at it. We beat the Vancouver Grizzlies 115 to 99. It was, like I said, man, for three quarters of that game, we basically dominated. We moved to 31 and 13 on the season. I could not be any happier with that. John Morant with 32, 5, and 11 with two steals and a block. Jaron Jackson with 29 and 9. And then our third leading scorer was actually Jackson Hayes. And I was wrong. He had 12 points, 11 rebounds, and six assists. Did not miss a single shot from the field. He was six for six. Just an amazing game for Jackson Hayes and uh, makes me feel like that trade was 100% worth it. Like I said, Josh Richardson only 5-1-2, and two, but still, he was great defensively. I could feel that when I was controlling him. And then on their end, Jonas Valanciunas, 26-8. and eight. So, you know, he had a good, you know, first couple of, uh, I think the first half was really good for him. He had like 18 or 20 points or something like that. Uh, second half, not so much. We put Jaron Jackson on him, completely shut that down. And then their rookie, Isaiah Stewart, with 15, 6, and 3. Wendell Carter had a decent game as well. Now, before we wrap things up, some of you guys were asking me to show our team records. So let's take a look at that. So going through it here, team record for total points. You see we got John Morant with 41. Jaron Jackson had a game where he had 40. But then it was John Morant again with 39 and 37. And then Jaron Jackson also matched that. He had a 37-point game as well. Field goals made, John Morant and Jaron Jackson tied at 17. Three-pointers made, John Morant with eight. You're going to see him a lot on this list. But also Danny Green and Anthony Edwards up there with seven. Free throws made, Bryn Forbes. R.I.P. Bryn Forbes. Wish he was still on this team. Bryn Forbes with 12. John Morant and Jaron Jackson also with 12. And then look at this, man. Sabonis already making his mark on Badger history. 21, 18, and 17. You see Jaron Jackson's on the list as well with 17, but Sabonis, man, he is a monster on the boards. Team records for assists, and you guys already know. You already know who's going to be on there. You already know. Ja John Morant, 18, 17, 16, 15. And then in those earlier seasons, we had a game where Monty Morris had 15, so that's awesome for him. Blocks, no surprise that Jaron Jackson fills this list up. 7, 7, 6, and 6. You see uh, Zubats is on there as well with 6 once. But uh, Jaron Jackson is uh, makes up most of the entries here. Steals, we got John ja Morant with five. He did it four times. And then Josh Richardson, right around when we acquired him, had five. So really cool to see some of the new guys, some of the free agents that we signed that are uh, making their mark on our history already. And then one last thing before we close it out, I do want to take a look at the standings because look at this. We are still in third place, okay, with the Sixers and Knicks ahead of us, but we're only back by a game and a half, man. We are having just a ridiculous season. Never in a million years did I expect that we would be at this point this early on in the season. 31 wins, and then you see in the Western Conference, nobody's even got 30 yet. The Clippers and the Pelicans up there with 29 and 28 wins, respectively. The Rockets also with 28 wins. Golden State's still up there. They're 29 and 18. Uh, and then the Lakers and the Thunder still up there. Um, can't believe the Thunder are actually doing as well as they are. But they are 100% making things interesting even though they lost their two big superstars. But anyway, that'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, I got a really cool little surprise for you guys. So I hope you stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to be playing another game, of course, as usual. I was thinking about the, the, you know, the playoffs because now this is uh, the, around, the, around this point now. I'm starting to think that we may make the playoffs, okay? It's a pretty good bet. That with the way this season is going, unless we have a catastrophic meltdown, we're going to be in the playoffs in some fashion. And I was thinking, you know, what do you guys think about how we should handle that? Should I play every game and just give you guys, you know, like the main highlights from each game? Uh, or should I do some sim casting? You know, what should I do? Because my heart tells me to play every game in the playoffs and to give you guys maybe, you know, like two games per episode. 
uh, and, you know, make that our, you know, our playoff run. Uh, but I want to get you guys' opinion on that. I'll probably put something up in the, uh, in the votes for, to ask you guys, you know, what you guys think so I can get an actual vote on it. You know, that makes it a lot easier so that that way I have some hard numbers to go off of. But anyway, we had a great game today against the Vancouver Grizzlies. The next game that I play is actually going to be a really cool one as well, so stay tuned for that. Some of you guys have been asking me to play uh, some some specific teams, and uh, so that that's going to be coming up in the next episode. I am going to be playing one of those teams that you guys have been actually asking for quite a bit. So I can't wait for that one. Cannot wait to play another game with our new additions. Right now, we're about the halfway point of this 2020-2021 season. So very, very soon here, we'll be seeing you know whether or not we make the playoffs. And I, like I said before, I'm pretty confident we are going to make it. It's just a matter of what seed are we going to get and what is our matchup going to be. So I really am so excited to find out what that's going to be like when we finally make it to the playoffs for the first time. Anyway, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Let's take this season one step at a time. I'm hoping to see you guys back for episode 25. But until then... To the best subscribers in the entire universe, I will catch you guys next time.